Calvary Chapel Divine, and good morning to all of those <laughs> joining us live on Facebook or the internet. We just welcome you this morning. We're going to get ready to do some um, worship here. You can find the words online and join in with us. But let's pray real quick. Father, we just thank you um, that we are able to come before you this morning that we have the freedom to gather, to worship, and pray, and read your word, Lord, and learn. And I just ask that you would be here in the midst of us this morning, God. We love you, and we praise you, and we worship you in Jesus' name.
worship you and honor you. God, I ask that we to just lay all things down at your feet and remember that you are the Savior and that you are worthy of praise and honor and worship. of salvation if we believe on you and what you have done on the cross for us and forgiving us of our sins, Lord. We have a promise of eternal life with you, and we just thank you for that, Lord. We just ask that your spirit would be here, Lord, that we would receive from your word, Lord. We ask that you would speak through Pastor Mike this morning and that our hearts would be touched and changed. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Um, God bless y'all. Thank y'all. I hope y'all had a wonderful week. Uh, I'm happy that you're here. I'm, 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 uh, we were praying for y'all, praying for y'all's trip back, and so praise God. Um, and then we also have some that are watching from Oklahoma City, so or Oklahoma. So God bless you. We we are praying for you as you visit grandkids, and uh, and and so welcome to Calvary Chapel Divine. We're going to be in Mark chapter six, verses forty-five through fifty-six as we continue and close out uh, the chapter uh, this week, and then next week we'll be in chapter seven. Uh, this Wednesday night will be in Daniel chapter 1, so we will begin. Uh, we had the introduction of Daniel last week, and, and um, uh, this week we'll actually begin Daniel chapter 1, so at 7 p.m. here, uh, and so hopefully you can join us for that. And if you can't make it, I think um, we had one of the uh, guys that uh, came and visited us last week, and they were their Wednesday nights are pretty pretty crazy, so... Anytime anybody runs a farm, seven o'clock's late, and all y'all understand that, because you're up at four thirty-five doing stuff. Um, but you know, if if you don't catch it 
you can watch it online and it's available uh, through Spotify, Audible, iHeartRadio, all that stuff. So you can listen to it later. And also, I actually loaded up all the books online too. So believe it or not, we got a couple of studies that are complete, so which is pretty cool uh, since we've been here. Um, and so, you know, they're available and then you can, because they're on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and all that stuff, you can share them and do whatever with them and pass them on so uh cactus fest that's what's being painted on the windows if you didn't if you're trying to figure out what the painting was cactus fest is coming up on november 6th the church is actually going to be helping out with along with grace calvary chapel is going to be doing the uh setup on on thursday the fourth so uh hopefully the men uh, can get out there and 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 uh and help get what we'll be setting up is the barricades and stuff because all this whole street will be completely blocked off. The carnival will be, will be complete right behind us where the carnival is going. Uh, and then the kids' corner is going to be that little parking area right off to the side. So we need servants for the kids' corner as well. And so if you want to help with that, cool, if you, if you can. Um, and, and so that will be on Saturday, though, and I think it's only between the hours of 11 to 6. And we'll break it up, and we're not going to make anybody try to be out there the whole time. Because uh, I, I know I couldn't handle that much time. I, I, I've done my time with five kids, and then grandkids I can do about 11 to 3 is what I can handle. And then I have to pass them on to Grandma. <laughs> so, uh, But, yeah, I'll have the, the, the times for Thursday and uh, Sunday. So the setup will be on Thursday. And then the, um, the, the teardown will be Sunday now. I got to talk to Marcus. What I really would love to do is have church service out in the street because the streets are all going to be blocked up anyway until we tear them down. And so I would like to see if we could have all the servants that are going to be here because we're inviting other churches to help out with this and just do church service out in the street. And then we can just put everything in the trailer and get it all put back up and, and be done that Sunday. So I'm going to get with Marcus this week and try to lock down time. So just have that date. Uh, that Thursday, November 4th, and um, November 7th, and in your mind. Ryan Reese is coming. So I we have been working on a Texas tour uh, for him. I don't know if you all know who Ryan Reese is. If you know Raul Reese um, uh, from Calvary Chapel, Golden Springs, this is Ryan's uh, one of his sons. And so he's going to be coming out, and he'll be at uh, Grace Calvary Chapel on Sunday, November 14th at 6 p.m. So if you want to attend that, I'm going to be there. We'll be serving there. Um, and, and so actually Ryan's going to be up in Pflugerville, uh, Galveston, Houston, um, and I'm not going to say Frisco, but up in Dallas at Plano. And, all, and, and this is the first leg. The second leg will hopefully include Divine. And so we're trying to figure something out. Uh, we're, we're praying about it. We're trying to figure out what we can do. And honestly, what I want to do is really something for the youth and do like a, a free pizza and just because really he's an evangelist. Uh, he's such a chill dude. And I, he probably won't. He's not your normal cup of tea for Texas. But I mean, he can evangelize like nobody's business, and and that's that's what we're really at the end of the day is trying to reach the lost. So that's that's the most important thing. So save the date, Ryan Reese on November 14th at 6 p.m. at Grace Calvary Chapel. Tides and offering are in the back. That's between you and the Lord. And uh, just uh, FYI, we are supporting missionaries from uh, Irapuato, Mexico. Uh, Oscar and Liz Gallegos. I actually talked to the son-in-law this. Friday at the wedding and so we're, we're hopefully when Oscar and them come in uh, for maybe Christmas or something they'll come and he'll actually come and teach and y'all get to meet him uh, and, and his wife Liz his wife Liz is she's amazing she's a prayer warrior and so um, she she's known me and Teresa since we first came to know faith and and has been praying for our family and still praying for our family up to this point and so but Oscar is, is there's a amazing work being done in Ido Plato, Mexico. Uh, if you're trying to figure out where that's at, it's actually if you, I was going to say Guanajuato, Mexico, but if you don't know where that's at, it doesn't help. But most people know Guanajuato because it's a vacation spot. It looks like um, Italy. All the buildings are done in European. 
and so a lot of people go on vacation spot but Ida Plato is probably about 40 minutes from there and so that's the town that they're in so keep them in prayer if you can and uh, and and let's go ahead and, and get into the word of God we're going to be in Mark chapter 6 verses 45 through 56 and one last thing before we get into it um, prayer request you got we have them back there on the back you can fill one out and put it in the box and we'll pray for you but we have been getting them online and so th those of you that are online and you're sending the prayer request in we actually take those and we have people in the church that are praying for those if you want to be a part of that prayer team you just let me know and i'll add you to the 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 contact list and when we get them in i'll have you pray uh, so we can we can do that and so uh, we're really blessed that we can come alongside of you and pray with you so that's an awesome thing so mark chapter 6 verse 45 it says immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side to bethesda while he dismissed the crowd and after he had uh, taken leave of them he went out uh, up on the mountain to pray and when evening came the boat was out on the sea and he was alone on the land, and he saw that they were making headway painfully, for the wind was against them. And about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. He meant, uh, to, uh, he meant to pass them by, or he meant to pass them by. Uh, but uh, when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost. And he cried out, uh, for they all saw him and were terrified. Uh, but immediately he spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they were utterly astounded, for they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. When they had uh, crossed over, they came to the land of Ganasarat and, uh, and moored to the shore, and went the, went. And when they got out of the boat, the people immediately recognized him and ran about the whole region and began to uh, bring the sick people on their beds to wherever they had heard uh, he was. And wherever he came in villages, cities, or countryside, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and implored him that they might touch even the fringe of his garment. And as many to, as, as many as touched it were made well. Let's pray. Uh, Father God, we thank you so much for today. We do pray uh, for this message, and uh, we thank you for uh, just allowing us to be here. We pray for this city. We pray for the events that we talked about. We do pray for the Cactus Fest, and just ask, Lord, it would be a, just a, a blessed time for us to be able to serve the community and to love on those that, uh, that we, we come into contact with. And, and uh, we just thank you, Lord, just for everything that you're doing. We thank you for... Uh, answered prayers and and, um, and and we just pray Lord for those that are online as well just just allow us to calm everything down to hear from you but not just hear from you but to have application to apply in our lives Lord uh, we don't care if the, the building grows uh, that's not the importance the importance is that we're growing spiritually um, that's the reality of it and and so I, I pray father God uh, just for um, uh, just for this message and, and the storms that we go through in our lives that some of the storms come and and they're things that we may have done through sin that have caused them and sometimes storms just happen um, it's no fault of any of ours it's just life and 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 God uses those moments to spiritually grow us and uh, so I just pray, Lord, I, I pray if there's anybody that's struggling through that or and they're in the midst of a storm, Lord, I pray that uh, that you would speak to them today as well and, and help them see the other side of it. So we, we thank you and we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I'm going to try to get my grandson stole my, I, my tablet, so I'm using mats. Uh, and so I'm not used to the iPad. I got used to the Samsung going this way. So if you see me going like this and it's not doing anything and that's what it is I, I haven't lost my mind yet so um we're going to entitle this I, I took it straight from scripture it's it's what jesus said uh take heart it is i do not be afraid take heart it is i do not be afraid we'll look at it in three parts jesus's prayer on the mountain in verses 45 through 47 uh, in verses 48 through 52 jesus's presence on the water and then finally in 53 
uh, through 56, Jesus' power made many well. So last week, uh, we, we kind of stopped in the middle of the book of Mark to try to talk to you all about who the shepherd is and how important it is to understand who Jesus is, that, that, that he is the great shepherd. And, 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 and this whole chapter, the whole chapter of chapter 6 is about compassion. That's what the whole chapter is about, the compassion. That's when he says, he, you know, he saw them as lost sheep without a... Uh, a sheep without a shepherd, and, and he had compassion on him. So the thing that he did before we took that break in Psalm 23 is we, we kind of were in where he fed the 5,000. Now, actually, he fed around 20,000 people with women and children. But one of the things he did is he fed them spiritually first and then physically. And, and so... When we pick this up, we got to remember what we talked about in that verse, and I'm just going to kind of go over this real quick, is the reason why is because in John 6, 15, it says that perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, Jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself. So he fed the 5,000, those 5,000 men who usually meet in the springtime to try to figure out how to overthrow Rome. And they see Jesus, and they go, that's our king, and this is our opportunity. And so Jesus, this is where we left off. So we need to understand this is where we're leaving off. And so when we see the word immediately, it's used quite a bit in chapter 6. But immediately he made, in verse 45, as we look at Jesus' prayer on the mountain, immediately he made his disciples get into the boat. Now, uh, immediately he actually made them, but he, ha he compelled them by force. Now, what do we have with the disciples? We have a couple of zealots who wanted to overthrow Rome too, right? They, you had a couple of them that were like, hey, let's overthrow Rome as well. And so Jesus is like, y'all got to get in the boat because this is not happening. This is it's not my time yet. And, and so he's compelling them by force, but I want to make sure you get that he, they obey. They do get in the boat. They do get in the boat, and that's important. Uh, and he tells them something that's very important because this is going to be the second storm they go through. The first one, Jesus was in the boat. This one, Jesus will not be with them physically, but will be there with them spiritually, even though they, didn't, they won't realize that. But he says, and immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. To Bethesda while he dismissed the crowd. Now it's important for us to remember that that the atmosphere here is that they are looking for a king. And they want to anoint Jesus king because this goes back to the book of Isaiah. Chapter 9, a verse we're very familiar with. We use during Christmas all the time. Uh, for to us a child is born, to, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So they wanted a king. They're going, hey, this is exactly what Isaiah talked about. And so one of the things that we need to understand is there are a lot of people that are worshiping a Jesus that they've made in their head. That's why it was so important for us to stop and make sure we understand the shepherd. Who Jesus is. Because guess what's going to come on the scene? There's going to be an Antichrist. Now, the church will be raptured before that happens. But everything that you see that's happening in the world today is because it's setting up the Antichrist. And people are going to fall for it. And so we talked about that, that this past week. You know, we talked about the man of, of sin, the Antichrist, and how Christians need to be rooted uh, in their faith and you know, when you have Christians, we talked about the 61% of them believe in New Age spiritualism. Hey, yoga's okay to do. Doesn't matter that I'm praying to that God. Hey, I can, I can meditate to a, a Buddhist. And I do all that stuff. It's okay. 61% of Christians actually believe that. 36 of them believe that Marxism is good. So you have people that are, are, are of faith that believe in Jesus and, and what they're believing in goes actually against Jesus. But this is setting up who? The Antichrist. And it's going to set up the Antichrist. 
29% uh, believe that they are, they, their ideas are based on secularism, which means I define truth, I define sin. Well, who's playing God then? You. And that's what, that's what is being taught uh, and, and, and what we're seeing more and more now with Christianity. Only 9%, and we, we shared that this Wednesday, only 9% actually have a biblical worldview. When they were tested... They gave them nine questions. Nine. They're on the devotion, so y'all can go look at them whenever you want. It's on the website. And, and you know, you should pass the test. Every question is yes. You know, if, if you've studied the Word of God, if you've been in Calvary Chapel, you better pass it. You know, you should know it uh, because you've been taught biblically. Uh, if, if, if not, you may want to question what you've been taught and, and just kind of go back and look over it. But, you know, at it, when you look at that, those nine questions, only 9% of Christians actually got them right. So that means that you have a, a, a Christianity, people wanting to follow a Christ that they've made up in their head. It's what they've made up in their head. And, and it says it in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not, uh, will not come unless the rebellion comes first. The man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. There will be a great apostasy, and it's happening right now. It is happening right now. In Matthew chapter 24, verses 10 and 12, it says, And many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another, and many false prophets will arise and lead many astray because lawlessness will be increased and the love of many will grow cold. Do we see that verse being lived out right now? Yeah. We have people hating one another. There's such division in the world right now. Right? Do we have false prophets? Many. Unfortunately, many. And they're leading many astray. Many astray. You still have people giving money to Kenneth Copeland. Dude is casting out the devil out of dogs. I don't know what. And people are still giving money to the guy. And it's like, what else is it going to take? And because lawlessness will be increased. Has lawlessness been increased? Oh, yeah. It's, it's happened. And love of many will grow cold. Jesus is the king. And why did Jesus come? And this is what they weren't getting. This is why he's trying to get them in the boat. Let's get them in the boat, right? In Jeremiah chapter 31, verses 31 through 34, this is why Jesus came. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on that day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord, for this covenant... That I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them. And I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. And no, and no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and his, each his brother saying, Know the Lord for they shall all know me. For the least of them uh, to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. So what we see is Jesus is going to come. And when you give your life to Christ, he writes the law on your heart. You're sealed and you're given the Holy Spirit. And you're covered by the blood of Christ. It's a new covenant and they weren't understanding that. They were wanting a king to overthrow the government. And unfortunately, I think, sadly, a lot of Christians are wanting the same thing. And that's not what's going to happen. If Jesus returns right now, and this is the thought that I had when, as, I, as I put this study together, how many people do you know that will go to hell? That you personally know? Because if he returns, done. Church is raptured, done, gone. And that's the thing that we have to really look at is like we have to, we, we want things to happen so quickly, but if we do if things happen that quickly, what will happen? People will die and go to hell. We're here to, to, to share the gospel. 
We're not here to fight with the government. Now, when we get to the book of Daniel, there will be times when you have to stand against the government. And we'll talk about that biblically. Because, again, we have to have a biblical worldview. And we'll talk about God's conviction. And when God's conviction is put on your heart, you got to do what God's conviction is telling you to do. doesn't matter who's in charge. Right? And so the, it's easier said than done. Right? It's easy to say it from the pulpit. It's hard to do it in real life. And so what, that's why the book of Daniel is going to come at a perfect time. We're going to learn all this. In John chapter 6, verse 35, and, and see, again, he fed them, and they're wanting that meal, and they're thinking, hey, look, we don't have to toil anymore, right? Don't have to work anymore. Jesus is going to be the king. He's going to feed us. He's going to overthrow Rome. But he said in Scripture in John chapter 6, verse 35, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. You're thinking of the wrong bread. And guess what? There'll be people who are ready to come and, and hey, we heard you give them free bread out. You're going to do the bread thing? And, and that's not happening. And so all of this stuff that we see is happening is to prepare for the Antichrist. It's, 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 and so that's why it's important for us to know who the King of Kings is, the Lord of Lords. Like we should know exactly who we're following, why we follow Remember what it says in Mark chapter 1, verse 14 through 15. This was the ministry that Jesus always said to the disciples and to the people as he opened his ministry. And, and it says, now after John was arrested, Jesus uh, came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God, saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Know your shepherd, Right. Know your shepherd and, and, and know who your Savior and your Messiah is. You need to understand who he is. He's all-knowing. He stands outside of time. He's got everything under control. In verse 46, it says, And after he had taken a leave of them, he went up to the mountain uh, to pray. And again, this is a reminder to us that we... Uh, we will have long, difficult days of ministries or long, difficult weeks of work. And you need to take time and make time to pray. No matter how exhausted you are. Right? Because we will come up with all kinds of excuses to stay out of the Word or not, not be in prayer. But we need to make time. And, and this is nothing new for Jesus because He did this back in Mark chapter 1, verse 35. And rising very early in the morning while it was still dark, He departed and went out to a desolate place. And there He prayed. And we're to imitate that, that example. We're to imitate that example. We need to, we need to seek prayer and, and have that be an important part of our, our spiritual life and our relationship with Christ. It helps us grow. I talked to somebody yesterday and they were, they were picking up, um, and I believe it's just an appointment from the Lord. They, we had a bouncy house that we had a party that we weren't expecting to have. This is how parties work. Grandkids, the, the, the daughter goes, hey, we're going to have a party at your house. We're like, <laughs> and so we had the bouncy house, and it didn't get picked up till late. Everybody left, but we, we had the bouncy house. And so we, um, and, and so me and Matt were wrestling in, in the bouncy house. We were at all, but we had the bouncy house, and the people that came to pick it up, he was telling me about their church and how their church is so focused on the building and making the building bigger uh, to the point of membership. And then they, they, they actually take your bank account and you, they take the 10% out. It's one of those kind of churches. And then on top of it, they need you to donate more for the building. And I was like, do you understand it's not the building that's important, it's the people that are in the building. It's about them growing spiritually. I, I said, I don't care if we don't ever grow out of the building that we're in, I don't care. I don't really wanna own a building. Because what's important is making sure that you grow spiritually. That's it. Because what you learn here, you take outside these walls. And the church is not a building. And so when we look at this, the importance of prayer, the importance of you growing spiritually, is you being in God's Word and you actually making time to pray. 
making time to spend with God to pray for things. We were praying for y'all as y'all were heading back. We prayed for y'all as y'all were heading out. And we found out your windshield wiper thing went out. And we were like, we better be praying for safe travel. <laughs> right? But that's the whole point of prayer. It's like as a church, we want to pray. And, and so it's important. And so Jeremiah chapter 29. I love this verse. All of us know this verse very well. Jeremiah 29 verses 11 and 12. It says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and hope. And everybody stops right there, right? Oh, I love that. But you want, you want the rest of the verse? This is why context of Scripture is so important. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. It's like, I, you need to be praying. You need to be seeking me. How are you going to get direction for your life? And we'll talk about that as we get into the storm because, you know, in order for you to, to, to get and be guided through the storm, you need to be in your word and in prayer and in fellowship. One of the things we can't do is like, you can put on the armor of God, but if you don't pray, it, you might as well take the armor off. It tells you in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, praying at all times in the Spirit. And you go, wait a minute, when should I pray? In all times, in the Spirit. With all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. Man, if you were doing a teaching on that, you could just, how many times? One, two, three, four times you get the word all out of one scripture. All. Right? All prayer. In all supplication, right? Prayer is important. It's important. And, and, and for the church as well. And we talked about that in the book of Nehemiah. Uh, in Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 4, as he heard the burden that was placed on the, on, on the uh, city of Jerusalem and as they were wanting to uh, build the wall because the, the city was being, uh, you know, anybody could come in and just rip people off because there were no walls for the city. In Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 4, he had a heart for prayer. It says, As soon as I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days, and I continued fa uh, fasting and praying before God of heaven. And he prayed for months to be able to go and build the walls. And so we need to be in prayer constantly. There's another great verse you can read when you get time. In Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 through 4, it talks about continue steadfastly in prayer. And then also in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, as he talks about, uh, I urge you that all supplications and prayer, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for, for the kings and all who are in high position, that we may lead peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. So prayer is important. And we see in verse 47, it says, And then evening came, and the boat was out, out on the sea, and he was alone on the land. And so here, here he is, and, and the disciples are off. Remember we talked about how it's a bowl? And, and here they go, they're rowing into a storm. Right? They're rowing into a storm. And, and, and so I think in Matthew chapter 14, verses 24, 14 through 24, all four Gospels have the, uh, that share this story. But it says, But the, the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And then we see also in, in John chapter 6, verse 18, in that, that uh, Gospel, it says, The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. And so now we're going to see that Jesus' presence on the water as He walks on water. In verse 48, we see, And he saw that they were making headway painfully, painfully, for the wind against them. And, and I don't know, has anybody ever done rowing? Like, for real, like rowing? I know most of us have rowed a boat or a canoe, right? Right, so we've done that. And any time you get headwind, it gets a little difficult sometimes to get moving. Um, it, you use up a lot more of your, your, your strength, for sure. Uh, but it says in John 6, 19, when they had rowed about three or four miles, they got nowhere. Three to four miles, and they're not moving, right? 
they're not moving and and it says in, in mark chapter 6 verse 48 one of the things that says in the one of the other translations is it says he saw that they were in serious trouble so jesus sees rowing hard and struggling against the wind and waves and and about fourth watch of the night he came to them uh walking on the sea and he meant to pass them by one of the things I, I thought about is, I don't know if any of y'all remember that old song by Bob Seger, Against the Wind. That was my daddy's song. Because he was always going against the wind. Uh, his, he, he, you know, y'all met him this, this past week. He was here last Sunday. And, um, you know, he struggled with alcohol until I think I was 20, maybe 20 years old, 19 or 20, well, when, Matt, when Michael was born. He, he, he became sober and came to know God then uh, I've been sober since but that was always the song I always remember because my dad was always going against the wind it seems like he just never could get anywhere uh, and and so when I was reading this that's the when I was thinking about this I, sometimes that's how our life is we're 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 moving and it doesn't seem like we're going anywhere but then God comes and 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 changes everything um, that fourth watch from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. And I know, Court, if you've done radio watch, 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. is the worst time to be doing guard duty or radio watch because you fall asleep. Have you done it before, Wayne? Or you've had to... That's a rough one. Yeah, well, there you go. That's, if anybody's been doing that, then you understand. That's the hardest time to stay awake is between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., because that's when your mind starts really playing, playing tricks on you. Um, and so they're, they're, you can imagine at this point their arms are burning. And, and even though Jesus saw, right, Jesus is all-knowing, fully God, fully man. He knows. The, can you imagine the conversation in the boat? Would you row? You're not rowing. Could you get on time? We're going now. What are you doing? You're making, and, and you can just hear the conversation going between the disciples. And Jesus knows all of that. And so when we come to church, Jesus knows all our conversations that are going on in our head too. Fully God, fully man. And he understands all that stuff. You know, it's like, are, is it, are we going to get to the next point? Can we, you know, taco, I'm getting a little hungry again. And, and he hears all that stuff that's going on in our head. But one of the things that I love is that Jesus, even though he wasn't in the boat with them, he was with them. They just didn't get it. And same thing with us is even when we're going through our struggles, God is with us. God is with us. And, and so that fourth watch, and as the, the boat is, is uh, they're desperately uh, moving, trying to move. And, and, and what, what's really hard on this is when we, when we see this, remember the humanity of the disciples. Remember, I told y'all, remember, because we always, you can read it. I remember when I was a, first came in, oh, well, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, you would. Yeah, you would, because the reality is, is we're human. You'd be crying out ghosts, too, and be terrified on the water, possibly, as well. And, and, and so it's important for us to understand that when we look at this, we look at this as understanding what, what is it that we need to learn from it. It's like, yeah, we can be in the boat just as much and, and we, can, we can be seeing, feel like we're going, no, no, you're in the middle of the storm and you're going nowhere. I've been in the same position. I've been trying to get this thing going. I've been, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know where you're at, Lord, but he's right there with you. He's right there with you, right? And so, uh, you know, verse 49 says, But when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost, and, and he cried out. So Jesus is walking on the water. It shouldn't have surprised them. He just fed 5,000 out of nothing, right, out of a few loaves and some, some fish. And it shouldn't have surprised them. But, you know, at the same time, they're, they're, they think they're seeing a ghost. And um, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 16 through 18, it says, For by him, uh, by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, invisible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all, all things hold together. And he is the head of the body and the church. He is the beginning, uh, the firstborn uh, from, 
the firstborn from the dead, that in everything might be preeminent. And that's why it tells us in John chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and that's Jesus. And so Jesus can walk on water. He, he's, remember, he, he stopped the storm last time, right? Peace be still, is what he said back in Mark chapter 4, verse 39. And so one of the things we, we, we look at is like in, in our struggles and what we're going through, Jesus has a plan and is there for you to try to help you get through that. And, and what we should be doing is trusting Jesus in the storm instead of running from Jesus. Because a lot of times we get hit with things in life and, and, and it tends to pull people away. Instead of them clinging to Christ. And I, I, I truly believe that's, it, it, that deals with more of the intimacy of your relationship. It's easier to pull away when you're intimacy there. So you may be tired of rowing today. You may be like, man, I've been rowing and rowing and rowing. And Jesus is in the boat with you. He knows what you're going through. He wants to help you. Remember what he said? And, and to, he told disciples what's going to happen. You're going to get to the other side. And whatever storm you're going through right now, you can't see the other side of it, but Jesus can. Just remember that. Right? If, that, if you get anything out of that. The other thing is, too, is the church is going through a storm, too. The church is rowing and rowing, and they're like, well, when are we going to have another revival? When's the next Jesus movement? Just keep rowing. Just keep doing what God's calling you to do because you don't see what's on the other side of it. Right? You don't see what's on the other side of it. So I, I, I think sometimes we forget that. Matthew twenty eight twenty says, Teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. He's with you. Right? He's with you. Uh, and they thought it was a ghost. The word there actually means a spirit or a phantom. You know, and sometimes, I don't know if anybody's ever been on the water late at night. Um... Uh, you think it may be a lighthouse, but you see something and then you start following it <laughs> and it's just somebody's house. It happens because your eyes start playing tricks on you. And so that's why these guys were terrified at this point. Their, their, their eyes are playing tricks on them. And it says, for, all, uh, for they all saw him and were terrified, but immediately, and I love what Jesus says, he spoke to them and said, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And and that's the same thing that we need to remember as well. Is it, it, same thing he tells Peter when Peter gets out the boat to walk on water. That's covered in Matthew 14, verses 28 through 33. That's uh, probably one of the scriptures we're extremely familiar with, right? And I always say, how many disciples were there? Only one got out of the boat and said, let me walk on the water with you. But as soon as he gets afraid, kablunk, he goes down. So for us, our fear should be in who? God. That's our reverence. Our fear should be in God. And as soon as we start fearing the world, you start falling into the water. Okay? So keep your, your perspective should be eternal. should be on Christ. And it's so easy. I mean, we can turn the news on and it's so easy to be, to, to start having fear start striking through your heart. There's so much mess going on. I mean, they had a shooting up in Arlington this past week at the school. A big fight broke out, and then the kid. And it's like, can you imagine the parent trying to get to their kid? The fear? I talked to one of our pastors who flies a lot, and as soon as they were coming and descending, uh, all the alarms went off in the airplane. And the things dropped down. And he said, and he goes, Mike, the thing that, because I was at men's prayer, and we were talking about this, and he goes, the thing that, puzzled me was the amount of fear that were on people's like they have no clue where they're going they're clinging to life so much that they don't know where they're going and i was like man i don't know if i would have had that thought that you're having he flies a lot though so he's he's constantly on a plane but he was like man it was so crazy just to see how fearful everybody was and so for us, it's a reminder to us that there are a lot of people struggling with fear today. And, and you have a, an answer for them, Jesus Christ. You know? 
And, and so we need to not be afraid. We need to point them to the Lord. Verse 51 says, And he got into the boat with them, and, he, when the, and the wind ceased, and they were utterly astounded. For they did not understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. Now, that's kind of that little piece there. They didn't understand about the loaves. So that goes back to him feeding the 5,000. And, and they're, they're like, they didn't get the miracle of feeding the 5,000. And they didn't get the miracle of, of him walking on water. They're missing who Jesus is. The disciples. But also the people that were on the land were missing it. So we, we can't miss this. I am the way, the truth, the life. We talked about those I am statements last week in the book of John. They're important. Right? They're extremely important for us to understand who the Messiah is, who the Son of God is. But we cannot miss the... the um, and, and sadly, that what they were wanting for most people was they had a lack of faith. They, it, it produced a hardness of heart. All they had to do was cry out to who? They just needed to cry out to, to Christ in the storm. What if one of the disciples would have said, let's pray. Let's stop rowing for a second and pray to God. How about you? Why don't you let go of the, the oar and, and pray? And it's the same for us, right? And the last thing we see is Jesus' power made well. And this verse, actually, these verses are kind of like we're an afterthought for Mark. Like he put them in, but they're very important. In verse 53, it says, They had crossed over and they came to the land of Gennesaret and, and moored to the shore. And when they got out of the boat, so they made it to the other side, right? Second storm, they got to the other side. Jesus made sure they got to the other side. The people immediately recognized him and ran about the whole region and began to bring the sick people on their beds to wherever they heard he was. This is before phones and, and texting and social networks. And so what everybody does is they, hey, Jesus is here. And they just go tell everybody, right? And they all bring their sick uh, to be healed. And that's a beautiful scene because that's what Jesus is wanting to do is He's wanting to, uh, to be able to heal those. And, and it's crazy, out of all the things that Jesus is being known for, He was a teacher of authority. He, 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 he also, what, cast out a legion of demons, right? Cast out more, more demons. He healed someone with, uh, with leprosy. He fed the 5,000. He's walked on water, but what is He known for? Healing. He's known for healing. And, and that's one of the things that really stood out for me as, as I was reading this, is that he's known for healing. Something the church needs to get back to doing is praying for healing for people when they're sick. You know? If you, can't, if you don't believe, then help my own belief. You need, to be, you need to be praying for that. We had somebody for a prayer request. They had wrote in they're having heart issues. And they were like, I already know what they are. And I, I'm, but, you know, it's like, let's pray for healing. You know, that you'd be that miracle. We need to be praying for that. In verse 56, it says, And wherever he came in the villages, cities, and, or countrysides, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and implored him that they might, might touch even the fringe of his garment. And as he touched it, made, uh, were made very well. So healing for Jesus was not selective. He didn't say, okay, I'm going to heal you, but not you. Right? He wanted to heal everyone. And I love that verse that says, for, and, and, uh, if, if I touch his garments, it reminds me of the woman, remember, that she had the bleeding uh, for all that time and she just touched Jesus' garment and she would be made well. Right? And so for us, as we close up chapter 6, the thing that's most important for chapter 6 and is most important for us as a church is compassion overrules arguments, okay? So compassion actually is a, 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 as we look at the whole chapter as a whole, right? Jesus had crowds that didn't want him there. They were like, you got to go, right? And then he also had, he had uh, uh, hardened disciples with hard hearts. Did he, did he say, no, I'm not going to deal with y'all no more? No. He had everybody who wanted to be healed, but he healed everybody. He didn't turn anybody away. 
He had a, uh, the socialist who wanted to make him king. Did he turn them away? No, he fed them. And so for us, we need to remember to have that same compassion as a church and as people. Right? To serve those around us and not pick and choose who we serve. I don't know if I can talk with them because you know how their politics are. Or I don't know I can talk with them because you know how their, their vaccine thoughts are. I don't know if I can talk to them because I don't know. And they just go through different things, right? So, so what's the, uh, the application? First, have we missed the ministry of compassion as a church? Have we missed the ministry of compassion? And that's something that we all need to, we, we need to remember. There are opportunities for us to serve here. Um, we've had some people help out at Divine Food Pants. We've, we've, we have the, uh, the food bank that we've been helping out with. We're going to be helping out at the Cactus Fest. Those are opportunities for us to, to help out. Second, how is your prayer life? Right? How is your prayer life? And then finally... Are you in a storm today? And maybe you're tired of rowing. Right? I want to read something to you real quick and we'll close up and pray. It says in 1 Kings uh, chapter 19, verses 11 through 13, He said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by, and, and a great strong, uh, a great and strong wind tore, tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in a cloak, and he went out and stood at the entrance of the cave, and behold, there came a voice and said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? And sometimes in the midst of the storm, you need to quiet things down. It's not going to be this big, broad thing like, Lord, you need to put it out in the sky so I can, it's going to, you need to quiet things down. It's going to be that quiet whisper. It's going to be in that time of meditation and prayer and after reading the Word. So, you know, we need to take time in the middle of the storm, especially if you're in the storm, so you can hear from the Lord, right? Let's go ahead and close out in prayer. Father God, we thank You so much for today. We do pray uh, for uh, this church and we pray for... Uh, just the blessing of um, being able to be in your word. We, we seek application, Lord. Speak to our hearts. Allow us to, to have that same compassion that you had, Lord, uh, to imitate that, uh, to be Christ-like in our prayer, in our compassion. Um, and, and at the same time, Lord, we thank you so much. If there's anyone who's in the storm or going through the storm or, or seeking the other side of the storm, Lord, I pray that they would... Uh, just stop and pray and seek You. Uh, be in Your Word. Be in fellowship. And at the same time, Lord, we, uh, we are uh, just blessed, Lord, to be here in this city. We pray for this community. Uh, we pray for this business, for Marcus and them, and just ask that You just continue to bless them as well. And we just ask these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. God bless y'all. I hope you have a wonderful week. Uh, Wednesday night, Book of Daniel, Chapter 1, and uh, calvarydivine.org if you need to find anything on the church, man. God bless. We'll see you all later.